I'm Sumi Kandola, and the past few years of uncertainty and chaos have left me deeply unmotivated and made me lose my zest for life. As somebody who is genuinely curious and inquisitive about the world and the people in it, this was really hard for me to digest. So I knew something needed to change, and that's how Monday Motivation was born. Monday Motivation explores the tenacity and champion mindset behind everyday people experiencing the fight of their lifetime. So come with me as I borrow some hope, courage, and perspective from brave and inspiring individuals. Meet Mike. He's intelligent and resilient and also happens to be my business partner. I've known him for about five years now and I never would have guessed he silently deals with a chronic illness that's questioned his life expectancy since a very young age. From being incredibly reckless with his life to now owning his one opportunity to live, this is his story. My name is Michael Smale. I'm an entrepreneur, business owner. I have cystic fibrosis, which is a genetic disorder that I, you're born with. Uh, it affects my lungs mainly, uh, digestive system, and in turn uh, causes lung infections. And that would be a chronic condition that you would have to deal with. And you'd always be under the weather. When I was younger, I was told that you know the the life expectancy was 30 but like the way i interpreted that is you know 30 lights out it's over like wrapped up you know i would have to go get pulled out of school to go to clinic appointments i kind of digested at that point that like yeah I'm, I'm not like everyone else in terms of my health I kind of went through the emotions of it and being like, oh, what's the point? Like, I, you know, I got a deadline, whatever. The first time I went into the hospital for a lung infection on IV drugs was, I think I was 13. And I hated going in there. It was always like this big drawn out thing. And get this, I would delay telling my clinicians or my doctors about feeling crappy because I knew their first thing would be like, we gotta, we gotta get in here. So I would almost, push it to the almost like the last minute to where I couldn't even get up, felt like crap, and I get dragged in there to, to, to do it. I always considered it like jail time, you know, like going to do my time, come out, get locked up, whatever. And I'd joke around with that, right? But So I started to act out a bit and, and not really care, not do the things I should have been doing. What do you uh, mean act out? wise like skipping my treatments or not taking my meds or, uh, you know, just things like that. Just not being very on it. But I think as I got older, when I was in my mid twenties, I started to really clue in. I remember just having like a situation occur. And I remember coming home and my dad and me were just chatting and he was like, so you gotta get it together. And in that situation at the kitchen table, I like, I kind of almost like, came out of my body and like was looking at the situation like what am I doing like failure it was kind of like a rite of passage almost like you got to grow up become a man deal with this and that's kind of where I was like yo I'm different I need to accept that and I can't go and do these things with my friends or do these things that they want to do uh, because that's going to be detrimental to my long-term health if I have till 30 may as well make the most of it right do you feel like you went through a victimized yeah, mindset? Yeah, I mean, it was generally in those positions where I'd have to like go in and I would always be like, oh, woe is me, like just, you know, feeling down and out. Would you share that with anyone? <laughs> yeah. It's just, just like, I guess like when my mom was around, she definitely had my back there a lot, so. You know, obviously the first time going in there after I lost her, it was really, really hard. But, she, you know, she was the one that like, gave me a lot of hope and just like the words, the affirmations of like, hey, you got this, this, that, that type of stuff. That's where it was. She was kind of your champion. Yeah, well, she had my back, right? So. And that kind of made me grow up quick and realize that 
I cash no one no one's gonna be around forever and that's like a hard thing to to realize so you grow up quick I guess I mean it wasn't like a next day I'm up and I'm you know perfect it was a gradual process absolutely I think over a six to twelve month period where I really started to tighten the dial to get it really hyper focused so I had to be hyper vigilant about every little detail about my treatment to make sure I'm getting it correctly. I think it was the reality of like starting to learn more about where that whole life expectancy comes into play. Like where's the data behind that? So I started doing more research. I started caring more about like my condition, started looking more into it. There's a big spectrum to it all. And it's not the end all be all. It's not white and black. Like I was just like, I was lights out at 30, whatever. But knowing that there's light at the end of the tunnel, there's, that's not everyone's situation. So that really started to make me think, okay, well, hey, I got a shot here. Who knows, like, how old I'll get. But no one knows that. Anyone with a clean bill of health could get hit by a bus. And that's where I started to realize I'm, I am just like everyone else. You know what I mean? I just had a little bit of my picture colored in, whereas everyone else is coloring it as they go. I kind of had a piece already done for me. So now I'm just filling it out like anyone else. In everything that you do, there's purpose. And like, regardless of what someone tells you or what you read somewhere, that's not a for sure thing. Because if you live your life with that sentence as being like, that's, that's all you got. Like, I don't know how to say this, but are you really following through on your legacy? Like, are you really finishing your story or are you just giving up? There's always a dice roll on like, that could not be it. And there's something else at the end. So why not figure it out? Why not finish the story and see where it goes?